Hi, I'm Bob Warfield from CNC Cookbook, and today I want to talk about something called Design for Manufacturing and Assembly. Design for Manufacturing and Assembly is a long name for anything, so we'll use the abbreviation, which is DFMA. Basically, DFMA consists of DFM, or Design for Manufacturing, and DFA, which is Design for Assembly. DFMA is all about making it easier to make parts and making the parts easier to assemble. Listen, we've all been there. A part gets handed down from the design engineers and it's so hard to machine that you wonder what those guys were thinking. Haven't they ever spent time on the shop floor? Haven't they ever run a machine tool? Don't they realize the problems they're creating? Well, DFA is all about eliminating those kinds of bad experience from the manufacturing process. Let's start with a little historical perspective. Originally the design office was right next to the shop floor. The design engineers heard all about problems with their designs quickly and they would respond as well as learning from the feedback for future designs. Today the shop floor has moved away from the design office. It's in job shops that are across the town or even across the country. It's gone offshore where it becomes separated by oceans, languages, and cultures. In a lot of cases, that feedback from the shop floor has stopped altogether, or at the very least, it's slowed to a trickle. Companies are realizing this is costing them money, and that's one thing that's bringing manufacturing back onshore and closer to the design office. Even so, Today's supply chains need end-to-end -end process for best results, and that process is called DFMA. Why would you adopt DFMA for your shop? First, let's realize that most of the cost-saving opportunities in manufacturing are locked in at the design stage. Changes on the shop floor only impact costs about 20 to 30% while design changes can save 70 to 80 percent on costs. That's big news. I'm surprised we don't hear about DFMA a lot more. Your design change is so much more effective. This chart shows why changes in design time make a bigger difference. The issue is the cost of a change, and you can see that goes up really rapidly as we move into production. Changing things on a CAD drawing is cheap, Retooling a manufacturing process is expensive, so it's very important to address these opportunities as early as possible. Here's another reason to get on the DFMA bandwagon. If you're a job shop, most customers will love DFMA feedback. If you can tell a customer what changes they can consider that will make it cheaper for you to manufacture their part, that's a value-added service that they'll appreciate, and you can see why. Don't you love it when you walk into some store thinking you need some expensive thing and they steer you to a cheaper alternative? That's the sort of thing that really builds loyalty to your shop from your customers. Here's how the DFMA process works. First, you start with DFA. Focus on the assembly side and especially on minimizing the number of parts in the product and optimizing them for assembly. Once you've got that covered, it's time to focus on the manufacturability of the individual parts. You're going to want to consider process, materials, tolerances, and anything you can do to optimize the part for your chosen manufacturing process. Let's dig in and see how it works. Here are some of the most important DFA principles. First and foremost, minimize the number of parts. Anytime parts don't move relative to one another and they can be made out of the same material, you've got an opportunity to combine them to make one part instead of two, and that will usually save money. Next, optimize to make it easier to assemble the parts. Design symmetrical parts that work in any orientation. 
If you're into lean manufacturing, look for polka yoke opportunities. That's basically idiot proofing the assembly process so there's no way to make a mistake when you're trying to assemble the parts. Reduce the number of fasteners and pick simpler fasteners. Threaded fasteners are the most expensive and difficult to assemble. Snap together is much better if you can arrange for it in your design. There are many more DFA principles like this one. Here are some examples. As you can see, on the left, multiple parts were combined to make fewer parts for a much simpler to assemble design. On the right, we show various fastener styles and their relative costs. A good benchmark to think about is that the average DFA effort can result in a 25% cost reduction on the part. That's pretty good right out of the box. Now let's talk about design for manufacturing. We're machinists and this is closer to where we work. The first DFM step is to choose the best process. Should we be casting, doing sheet metal fabrication, CNC machining, or what? Next, choose the cheapest and easiest to work materials that satisfy your part's functional requirements. Next, tolerances play a huge role in cost, as you know. Avoid tight tolerances as much as possible. Just the bare minimum tolerances needed to satisfy your parts functional requirements. Lastly, there are many details on parts that affect the difficulty of machining. Particular geometries and other aspects lead to these challenges. If you can connect with the designers and let them know what's causing trouble, you may discover they have no problem changing the part to eliminate those issues. I want to just take a moment to focus on the high cost of tolerances because they drive a lot of cost in a product and a lot of headaches in manufacturing. As the chart on the right shows with modern CNC, tolerances down to about a thousandth of an inch increase costs as they get tighter but pretty slowly. Once your customer wants to go below a thousandth in tolerance though, the costs skyrocket. Here's another thing not everyone realizes. GDMT, that's Geometric Dimensioning and Tolerancing, is a much better tool for expressing tolerances than simple plus minus tolerancing. GDMT will give more relaxed tolerances while still giving you the specs your parts function requires. If your shop isn't all over GDMT, you should be developing that skill. Let's go over some specific examples of features on parts that increase costs. Deep holes are a big one. Anytime a hole is more than three diameters deep, your costs go up because you need to start using special techniques. The deeper the hole in terms of diameters, the more costly. I just did a CNC Chef video that was all about overcoming deep hole challenges if you want to check into that. Likewise, blind, flat bottom, and intersecting holes can all create various problems that will increase costs try to avoid them. If the part can be changed to use all through holes, it'll be cheaper to manufacture. Deep pockets and slots. What machinist hasn't fussed and fumed over a part with these features? Likewise, tight radiuses and narrow regions. All of these things force smaller diameter cutters, often that are longer, and they're prone to deflection and all the problems that go with that. Again, I've got a CNC Chef video that's all about tool deflection. Check it out. These are all areas that if you can change the parts design to avoid them, your customer is going to save cost and they'll often appreciate that. How do you get DFMA into your shop? By now, I hope you can see the value of DFMA and why customers appreciate help with it. You're probably wondering how to get it into your shop. There are a variety of online articles available and there are folks out there teaching courses on the topic. I've got several articles about it on my CNC cookbook blog that go into much greater depth. Two, you can create checklists that help you institutionalize this knowledge as well. The time to apply the checklist is when you're quoting the job. Give the customer the feedback then, not when he's in the middle of producing the parts. That way, you're getting it early on. It's still part of the design rather than the production phase and it's easier for all of this to happen quickly and you maximize the savings. Lastly, 
you can get DFMA software to help automate DFMA feedback on a design. My own G-Wizard calculator has a module for this purpose and that's where the screenshot came from. There are a lot of other DFMA software packages available too. I hope you'll investigate DFMA for your CNC work because it can make a big difference. I'm Bob Warfield. Thanks for listening and I'll be back soon with another CNC Chef video.